Today we're going to have a look at something a little bit different. This is uh, a conversion set for the Edouard uh, BF109 E1 Messerschmitt um, to convert it to a Spanish Civil War uh, 109. Uh, now the E1 was there but also um, so were the variants from A running through to E3 and uh, this particular set uh, will backdate it to um, a D1 model with the Jumo engine which has uh, quite a notably di no noticeably different um, air scoop and nose and uh, there's also deco options for a B as well which um, I've tried to look into and I think the B option is included with this as well as far as I can tell it's the same engine um, but uh, that might need further um, research if you were going to build that particular kit. And just for reference, this is the Edward kit here, which um, this set is for. And uh, this is the weekend edition. There's also a profi pack edition of this, although I think both are out of production at the minute. This is just early in 2018, but they may very well be back in production before too long. Um, so we'll have a look at parts of the kit alongside the conversion set as well, just to see the sort of things we might have to do. I'm not going to start cutting this um, base kit about or anything like that. Um, at the moment until I actually go on to build it but we should be able to see how some of the parts are going to fit. So as we get into the kit we've obviously got the resin parts on their blocks and some decals and we've also got the instructions which are a set of uh, A4 printed sheets here which have written uh, instructions running through uh, the different sections on how we're going to convert this model. Now um, it's, it's very nicely done, it's, um, it's split into wing modifications and then fuselage modif modifications which is quite nice and we've also got and we've also got picture references as well which are very helpful so uh, the two correspond to each other so uh, as you see in here picture one for instance as you read through you'll see it refers to picture one um, here, where uh, remove the radiators from the wing underside, leaving a one millimeter wide ledge to assist with the location of the insert pla replacement panels. Refer to pictures one, two, and three. So, as you can see here, uh, the underwing is being marked, um, then it's being cut out with the correct one mil rim around the side, and then the new piece slots in. Now, there, the, if this is not for the beginner, you know, this is for um, more advanced uh, modelers. However, this is quite a simple um, conversion when you look at it. It can seem a little bit daunting off uh, straight off the bat, but actually, as, as you read through it, as long as you test fit, take your time, and um, be very clear on what you're trying to do, then you shouldn't really have any problems. It, you know, it's sort of measure two, three, maybe four times, and cut once. You know, so you've got to make sure you, you, you're where you need to be. So for this piece, uh, we've got the resin parts here. So if we have a quick look at the corresponding parts here on the sprue. So I'll just get the instructions out of the way slightly. So step one is talking about replacing this part here which are the uh, radiators uh, on the under underside of the wing and these parts go in to replace it so we're looking at something like that that's how it's going to slot in I believe nope sorry that uh, cutaway edge goes in like that so you're going to have one piece there and one piece there and it's quite straightforward again you've got the markings here for where the kit part goes in and uh, what we're basically doing is leaving enough of a ledge here so that this part here as you can see there's a bit of a ledge there just slots in to aid um, fitting now it, you'd have to put some sort of backing on if you weren't to do that so again that's uh, where the point is to make sure you're cutting where it needs to be and you want to measure it correctly and here you can see it's quite clear where it's meant to um, be marked out and, and you can see here and line it up quite easily so I mean again initially it could be slightly daunting but once you get into it it's not too much of an issue then as we run in so that's one of the major parts of this actually is uh, putting those radiators in so once you've got that done that's the first three pictures then we move on to picture four which is talking about uh, cutting out the notch in the wing leading edge to allow for the new radiator to be fitted and that is um, that is this part here, 
which is going to make up the new part of the nose. So we've got a complete nose section there. I haven't run through the parts, we will look at them in detail, but we'll start bringing them out through as we go through the instructions. So I think that's the best way to handle this. Uh, so here, this is a slightly modified part. So for that, we just take a, a piece out here at the front of the underside of the wing. And that is actually more or less uh, runs along a panel line from what I can see. It's just at the, the top here of these two uh, running to where the landing gear legs go in, you just be off the top of those two points there. So again, measure, uh, make sure it's correct. And here you can see marked, cut, and then the piece fits when we get to the next stage. So we're just we're just preparing for the new nose here at this point. You don't actually fit that after that. And then running on through, there's some rescribing of panels uh, here, which is circular panels and a few rectangular panels on the underside of the wing and there is a new part there in picture seven is the new oil cooler and that is a piece there on a block which again just fits quite nicely just on around that area there so again you've got good reference here showing you where it's meant to be and uh, he has put um, a bit of a panel line wash in there so you can even see that this panel is uh one-sided so it gives you it's it's uh the panel folds over one side so it's like biased to one side of the oil cooler so just to make sure that you've got it lined up correctly so that's again extremely useful and that would just go in this area here and that looks to me as it would be uh, just stuck straight on with no problems. So once you've put in the new circular templates, some of which are here, he, he does mention some of which, uh, you know, some are already there and they are. So it's just making sure that you put them in correctly because this is also um, got instructions for the E3 version, which is a little bit more complicated, but you can use the E3 version of the uh, Edward 132nd 109 if you've got it. This is the E1 section which means it doesn't have the gun bulges on the bottom and it's got a slightly different uh, lower wing section which links in with the versions that we're doing here which is the A, B, C and D versions. Then once you've got through that you're pretty much going on to the major part of this conversion now and as you can see hopefully you're with me in the fact of um, this not being that daunting or um, difficult to do. And then we're starting to work out um, parts for attaching the new nose. Now we do still have two pictures here that re refer to the wing modifications and that's putting in the longer slats at the front here. And um, there's certain parts there as well that describes if you're using the E3 version, you've got to do a, a couple more extra modifications. And as you go on to the fuselage section, we're then looking at this piece here, and you're gonna need to take this entire piece off the front here. And we're gonna butt join the new nose on like this. And as you can see, it's a slightly different shape, and certainly on the underside, it's a completely different air scoop there. And that's, you're gonna end up with something more like this. So again, very simple, it's making sure you're cutting in the right section. And now you can see it's quite strong lines there showing you where it's meant to be. And it is as simple as cutting, following this line completely down, going through the wing root as well. And then we've got the part here, which is on the top here, which is a cowling. And you're cutting that across the panel line where these two spots are there. And that is gonna be replaced by this. So if we clear that out of the way again, should be able to see this a bit clearer then. We're talking about replacing that part there. So you cut through the panel line to remove this part here on this section. And we're also going to completely remove this part here. And then this is the butt join like that. So where are we? And we're going to be on something like that. So that is pretty much the major works on this kit. Everything after that is more or less, everything after that is more or less um, 
just uh, smoothing in and making sure you've got a nice join to the fuselage and um, here you can see the butt join there uh, once it's all completed you glue the fuselage onto the wing and get all of that sorted because we do have the wing root here in this section so that's going to make up the missing part here on the on the upper surface and it goes in like that and that's the bit that you've cut out uh, you put in the new radiator uh, mesh which we've got a separate piece for so that just slides in like that and then you've got that ready and then this goes on to the nose cone like that and then sorry not the, the the new nose the engine and then it all comes together and it gets taped up and here you can see it's very useful seeing these pictures where this has actually been done and as you can see that's a really good join um it's not going to take much work there and if you follow through these instructions as best you can you're going to find that you're going to have um a similar join there so you know i can't really see any massive issues from this certainly not um, compl as complicated as some conversions can be and you're working in a nice scale there are a few more circular um, panels here that you need to place and this shows you where the placement is and we've also got descriptions of it in this uh, written up part here and then we've got the wing slats as well which uh, is a feature of the early 109s the wing slats come up to about this far and as you can see the Edward ones are set back there so it's just a case of cutting out this section here and putting in the new piece and now I believe that is only for um, some of the early variants so yeah so if we're looking at picture 18 and 19 this is with the extended slats uh, it says here in part 7 if building Hendrix B aircraft using the extra decals further modifications to the wing will be required as the A and B variants did not have guns in the wings cut a section of the upper wing slat area to take the, the resin insert the upper gun bay hatch shaded black needs to be removed and that's this piece here and um, including the small tab on the trailing edge as well and that is there so I don't know if we can see this here there is a tab there it means including that and then sanding this off and completely removing it if you're doing the B version. The surface detail will then need to be reinstated. The underwing gun ejector chute will need to be filled as well. And that is this part here, I believe. There's a, a hollowed out bit there. Which is just um, meant to represent where the uh, spent bullet casings will be uh, removed and then the new longer resin slats will now replace the kit parts refer to pictures 18 and 19 so these two here are, are optional and that does mean we have the uh, parts in this conversion set to make a B aircraft as well as a D so that's a nice option there and a nice extra part uh, of the kit so we do have then general notes here uh, running through some of the other pictures, whereas in picture 17 we're putting a new spade grip there on the control lever. Uh, you may want to check your references. I have seen um, in some references that the D uh, or only some of the prototype Ds actually had the spade grip. They then moved to the more common E uh, control stick. Again, there are no parts included in this kit for the cockpit, so you'll have to find your own reference. I've struggled to find any reference on the um, cockpits of these. As far as I can tell, they are quite similar to the E. Um, uh, so, you know, I'm going to do a bit more research before I tackle this kit to have a look at parts of the um, cockpit, and then I will change them accordingly if I can find it. We've also got a few more parts in this general area talking about the B aircraft, so not to uh, fit the exhaust stubs uh, to Hendrix B aircraft and a few other parts. This set contains the conversion parts for the D. The, oh, right, so, well, uh, yeah, so there's another part here. The set only contains the conversion parts for the D. Just extra decals are included for the B, uh, but we've also already seen that there are extra parts here, so um, I'm you may want to look into that if you're going to do the B aircraft uh, there is a set for um, B's that Alicat uh, sells as well so it might be worth uh, cross-referencing that and if you're specifically looking at doing a B aircraft then it may be worth getting one of those sets as well and we've also got some um, new uh, slats here 
and they are to replace the kit parts. So, as you can see here, that's the sort of thing we're looking at there. And yes, the flaps here are just to replace the like-for-like -like kit parts there uh, with more detail. So we'll have a look at that, we'll combine the two there uh, shortly. And then flipping over here, we've got a scribing template here for a few more panels on the underside of the wing. And a nice write-up here explaining um, some of the reasons they've chosen to do what they've done as far as the marking options. And it's mainly around the B aircraft that um, uh, Hendrick used, which had the Olympic symbols on the nose cone. So it's quite nice there and you can dial into that if that's one of the, the kits you're looking at if that's one of the schemes you want to do and then general stuff just telling you about how to deal with resin and what is best to uh, use to fill it so that's a very nice set of instructions there and I think that's not going to cause any problem uh, for someone trying to want to uh, trying to do this kit then we're on to decals and the marking options so here you can see you've got a no two sets of nice decals there uh, the carrier film is very thin and the decals are extremely well um, printed uh, there is quite a lot of carrier film in between some of these numbers so you might want to now we're talking about 132nd scale uh, it might be worth cutting around those decals as best as possible to get uh, a very nice tight border to the decal as it goes on and here you can see the marking options so we've got uh, one at the top here which is again a nice option with the fact that it's the darker colour so uh, it discusses in that what uh, that part I just alluded to of the colour and it's uh, ROM 63 on the top and ROM 65 on the bottom um, it is worth noting that um, there is a huge debate with the Spanish 109s whether they were silver um, ROM 63, ROM 02, and then what shade of ROM, and then what shade ROM 63 is. Now here it's depicted as a kind of light ghost grey, a bit like um, modern jet kind of colours, which is pretty much what half the people seem to um, seem to uh, think is the correct colour. I'm much more myself. Um, I prefer it being a bit of the darker colour. Um, I think I've got my preferred colour is the um, ROM 63 here by uh, MRP and I think this is as close as you're going to get to be honest to um, the colour I'm looking for which is again uh, it's uh, worth noting this is the, the exact shade that uh, Mr Hobby's ROM 02 is so if you're using that as well that is the kind of colour we're talking about um, so it's you know up to up for debate. So if I were you, I wouldn't worry too much, and um, I'd pick the colour scheme you like and paint it the colour that you're happy with. So running through the options, we've got um, a, a D1 here with uh, uh, the pilot is Moulders from uh, J88, which is six uh, seven nine from the Spanish version, and that's um, got uh, Luke's there. I think that would be or Lucius. <laughs> not too sure on the pronunciation and um, it's got a good bit of markings there as well with the uh, Mickey Mouse symbol then we've got Hendrix aircraft so you've got two options here and the slight differences is in the H and uh, in the fact that this is a B and that's a D so you can again with your reference you can find out what you want to which one you want to go for and there's your marking options for it and then we've got one from um, uh, La Siena I believe and uh, that's 1938 and this is um, another D1 version with another one of the iconic symbols from the Spanish 109s and then over the other side it gives you uh, information on the colours used and um, the upper and lower surfaces for the marking options so it's pretty um, standard stuff there for Spanish 109s and um, a closer look at the decals there should give you a bit of an idea of what um, what we're dealing with as you can see it's very nice you barely see the um, the carrier film it's it's very tight they're very thin decals so they look very nice I've not used these in anger so it's hard to tell you how they're going to react but I'm sure they'll be fine um, again at this scale painting the 
markings as well is obviously an option. It's what I tend to prefer. Um, however, looking at these decals, they are very, very nicely printed. So I may, um, I may try them and see how we get on. So that's those. Then moving on to the parts of the kit. Now, uh, the main event here is the nose and the new air scoop. Now I've uh, put a bit of a panel line wash on there just to show you some of this detail and make it stand out. We do have full riveting detail, nice, um, mostly scribed panel lines and it's extremely well detailed. Uh, I can't fault it whatsoever. The casting is, is very well done as well. Again, I've cut these off the blocks, these, these do come on quite large blocks of uh, resin. And the fit there, again, without any cleanup, this is just cutting the blocks off so they fit. It's very, very good, and that's not gonna that's not gonna cause any problems. There's no warping. Uh, it might just need pulling in slightly and just lining up, and then that creates your butt join there for the fuselage. So looking at that, we're going to be talking about it's going on the aircraft like this joining there and there you can see the new part of the wing route as well so that shouldn't cause any problems whatsoever so that's those parts then next we've got the new radiators on the underside here again I've done a bit of a wash here to show you the rivet detail which is very well done very fine uh, panel lining and rivets and recessed rivets and again you've got the ledge here uh, for the ease of fitting so not a problem there whatsoever uh, removing from the casting blocks is generally pretty well uh, handled and you've got an indent there I don't know if you can see this so it's not as thick as the part so uh, generally scoring along there with a hobby knife or using a razor saw is a very good way of getting those off of the casting blocks then we've got the flaps. I've taken one off of the casting block just so you can see. Um, again, this is just like the kit part but slightly more detailed. Now I will get the kit part. So here's the kit part just for uh, comparison. And this is a much more finely moulded piece, I must say. It's, um, it's much more refined detail, much thinner as well. Um, it's really nice there and oh, it looks like it actually wants to come off so let's, that makes life easy. So there's the part. So again like for like so fitting shouldn't be any issue um, and yeah I, I think I would be using the resin parts there in place of this it's just so much thinner on the edge there uh, which is something you want you know that's basically what we're what we're after. So they're very nice then we've got the slats here, and these are replacing the kit parts uh, with the earlier, longer style slats. So as you can see here, that's what we're kind of talking about. It's the same, it's the same part there, but it just goes on further into the into the wing there. So it'd be like this. So again, the instructions might have been a, a little bit confusing that we were looking at before, because I think uh, the, all the D models had the longer slats like that. But again, check your references and um, adjust uh, adjust the build accordingly. So that's a nice part. Then we've got a new uh, two-bladed propeller instead of the three bladed propeller that's included in the kit and um, and this should cause no problem again it's, it's basically just butt joining uh, onto the parts here which uh, does have a little bit of a mark here so it will take this piece and you put that together you glue those two parts on like that going through the propeller here so you'd obviously take the casting blocks off, glue this part down, and then push it through like that. And um, that's a, a nice feature, and um, pretty essential for this uh, this early model. So, uh, so extremely nice addition. 
Then running on through we've got a couple more parts here which I took off the casting block. So this is the scoop here for the rear of the, uh, the, the, the opening, sorry, um, for the rear part of the air scoop. And that fits in nicely there, no problem. And we've also got the radiator here, uh, the mesh part, which slots into there as well. Now, that will go in nicely, I just don't want to push it in until I've cleaned it up a little bit. But it does fit, no, no worries there. And I think you'd want to open up this little bit of casting film in there as well, so you just clear that out. That's very thin. You could almost push through that with your finger. Um, then we've got two duplicate parts here, which are for the exhaust stubs. Um, machine gun barrels and the spade grip there for the control lever so that's a great option you have these um, hollowed out exhaust stubs which are nice they're not fully hollowed out, ho hollowed out but there is an indent there so that should be enough to either hollow them out further or to take a wash to give the um, feel of depth and then lastly we just have the oil cooler there which uh, we, we talked about looking in the instructions that just glues straight onto the underside of the wing and then there's these extra parts for the slats here so when you're you cut out that extra section here and that gives you this piece running on further for to take the new longer slats like this so again, very straightforward, shouldn't cause any problems whatsoever. So that is the Alicat Models uh, BF109 Spanish Civil War conversion set for the 170, uh, 132nd Edward BF109E. Um, uh, this is a great kit, it's uh, extremely well uh, cast, all the parts of the resin are very well detailed, I haven't seen any problems in my kit. Um, it's very well packaged as well, it's a solid box and uh, the resin comes in two plastic bags. Again, when dealing with resin, make sure you don't chuck anything out from the bottom of the plastic bag until you've checked all your parts, because often bits can break off and then they're in the bag and once you've chucked them in the bin, they're generally gone forever. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward uh, conversion as well, looking at the instructions, and it should be... Um, should make for a very interesting model, so uh, these are available on their website. It is um, a small company, so you've got to bear in mind, sometimes there can be a two to four week wait. Um, I think mine was about three to four weeks, but it was ordered around Christmas time, so uh, you can't argue with that. It does seem as though he's making these more or less to order, or you know, he makes one and then has one on the shelf, so once they're gone, that's it. Um, so yeah, if you've got one of those in your stash and you're wondering what to do with it, with the, uh, with, with the Edward kit, then this may very well be an option. Uh, the other versions that are available um, are everything from the prototypes so there's the two v models which are also a models and you've also got the a the b the c another set for the d that isn't spanish civil war related and um all of those early options uh, all of those earlier variants as well some of them do have spanish uh, versions included in the marking set as well so well worth a look head to the website and I've put a uh, description in the link below and see if there's anything that um, you might want to get yourself.